Why does the music sound like the kids' bob kids are about to go off in unison? Human lives were at stake and I did what I had to do. It has come to my attention that the people have been demanding answers, reforms, about a very serious topic that I was not familiar with until recently. TikToker's music. There is apparently a trend nowadays where young people get really popular on TikTok and then use that fame to launch their music career even though people didn't know that they wanted to launch a music career to begin with. You know, at first I thought, it's kind of genius. I mean, if you have a platform, you should probably use it to make your dreams come true. Like, I would definitely start my own authoritarian island if I could. So like, I completely get it. But this is what the people had to say. Can we denormalize TikTokers making Can music? Can TikTokers stop making music and Can just TikTokers stay in their lane? stop releasing music? Y'all look When like will clowns. we stop we... letting TikTokers make music? Can we make it a law for it to be illegal for TikTokers to make music, please? And you know what? I hear you. Somebody's gotta do something. Somebody's gotta take responsibility for this. And then I realized, who's more qualified than me? What are my qualifications, you may ask? I've been a professional music listener for over 20 years. I found out about Justin Bieber before he blew up and released his hit song one time. I have accumulated over 100 hours of karaoke sessions and have an average score of 100% on Believe by Cher. One of my parents has a law degree. I could keep going, but I'm running out of ideas. If someone's going to establish laws for influencers in the music industry, it's gotta be me. Disclaimer, I'm only going to talk about people who got started on TikTok today. If you would like me to establish laws for YouTubers as well, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification bell, leave a comment saying, please do it in that order. Then it will happen, that's just this court is in session. Our defendants today will be American social media personality, dancer and singer, Addison Rae. Internet celebrity, singer and actor, Lil Huddy. American social media personality and singer, Dixie D'Amelio. And last but not least, human who doesn't have a Wikipedia page, Nessa Barrett. I think that's how you say her name, I'm not sure. Let's start with Addison Rae. Let's hear what Addison Rae has to say in her defense. Addison Rae, queen of relatable content. She said, I know you're obsessed with me and that's what unites us. I too have an obsession with myself. I understand you. By my moisturizing cream. The song wasn't as bad as what I expected from reading the comments. She kind of sounds like Selena Gomez from an alternate universe. Like if Selena Gomez was born after 2000 and never auditioned for Disney and got famous on TikTok and then started singing at 20 and her name was Addison Rae. I can, I can see it. I do have to point out that I did find some incoherences in some of Addison's statements, this one in particular. She said in an interview, it's not as deep as people will think, and then sang, I did my hair like waves on the beach, this dress so tight you can't even speak, my heels so high, my genitals bleed, music so loud, but I hear your heartbeat. What did she mean by that? Have people been finding secret meanings behind the hair like waves on the beach? Have people been making assumptions about her health status based on the fact that she can hear someone's heartbeat over loud music without a stethoscope? Who are the people she was talking about? And can we have a conversation? Addison didn't lie though. This is a pretty lighthearted song and it's not there's nothing wrong with that. Lighthearted songs can be great serotonin boosters. They can be used for vital activities like twerking, for example. However, this song kind of feels inadequate for twerking. There are a lot of strong movements in that music video, but it kind of feels like they're dancing to a different song. The beat doesn't drop that hard. The beat has been sheltered by its parents and never went through the social experiences that would have made it stronger and more prepared for adult life. And yet Addison's face kind of says, it did steal a bracelet at Claire's when it was 13 though. Little Huddy. Little Huddy. Little Huddy. Little Hoodie. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea who Little Huddy is. But I kept seeing comments about him under other TikTokers music videos, so I figured he must be relevant to the conversation, to the case that we have at hand. So let's see.
Lil Huddy, more like Lil American Rejects? Lil Blink one something something? Please stop using numbers in your group names, please. This song kind of sounds like it could have come out at the same time as Complicated by Avril Lavigne. Like this is the guy she was talking about finally responding 20 years later. At this point, she's already moved on. She's twice divorced. She doesn't even remember his full name. And he's out here responding to a diss track that was released before he was born. Tragic. I don't think it was a bad song. I would even go as far as to say it is a song that exists. But I can't make a verdict yet until we've heard the other defendants. Dixie D'Amelio. <sighs> Dixie and I have a lot in common, I think. I'm about to cry. Not because of the song, but because I just choked on my tea. Dixie and I have a lot in common. She's a person. I'm a person. She's had to cohabitate with loud roommates. Same. I needed my peace and quiet, but I could not afford to move out of the house. I completely get it. The housing market is ridiculous. I kind of like the main course phrase situation. I got plenty of roommates and they're all in my mind. Mine were very real, but go on. This song kind of makes me feel confused though. It starts with these negative themes, like she talks about dealing with anxiety and how it's out of her control and it's unfair. And then by the end of the song, it feels like the beat is reaching a climax and it's getting resolved. And then she says, I guess that I've got to live with all these roommates. With these lyrics and the way the music is going, you would think that she's reached a point where she's completely accepted her condition and she's at peace with it because it is what it is in it. But look at her. She looks like she's in pain. She looks like when there was a 75% off plus buy one get one free deal at Popeyes and I bought an entire family's worth of fried chicken and ate the whole thing in one night. That was not positive. That was traumatic. So why does the music sound like the kids bop kids are about to go off in unison? Nessa Barrett. I don't know. I hope that's how you pronounce her name. I also don't know who Nessa Barrett is, but she has been on a few American talk shows recently, apparently. So I feel like she's extremely relevant to the topic despite the lack of Wikipedia page. Let's hear what she has to say. I like this song. I like something that's really off-brand. She said la da di oh la da di and I said me too. This song also sounds like it could have come out in 2002. Is that kind of music becoming trendy again? Can Evanescence make a comeback? Is Evanescence still making music? Wait. Oh my god they are! I think Nessa pulled it off. She's like depressed but ambitious. She's like I'm pretty but like dangerous a little bit. The Jaden dude though who's also featured in the song Is he okay? Does he need help? It's time for the verdict. <laughs> Silence. I've made some decisions. We have a very mixed bag of talent. On the one hand, we've got the year 2000 kids. Kids, they're not kids, they're adults. I mean, they were all born after 2000, but they sound like the popular artists from the early 2000s decided to possess them to make that era happen again. And I'm not mad at it. You do what you have to do, Emily. On the other hand, we have the, uh, the other people. I personally believe that they all have the potential to get better at what they're doing. And that's always a good thing. You don't want to peak too early. Addison's song is the first one that she's ever released. She said herself that she only got into music very recently, so she's still very new to this craft. And I think it's fair that her first song is not going to be her best song. I think one of the main issues is that if you start releasing music and you already have millions of followers, it's not going to be like when you personally decide to like make music and no one's going to see it until you get better and people start noticing you. Normally, we all start learning something, suck at it, and then no one cares except for your siblings and close friends that will keep bringing it up every time you're celebrating something to keep you grounded or something. That's ridiculous. 
stop it. There's also the fact that most popular musicians have their own interesting background story, like they were born to do this. The BPM of Ariana Grande's debut song is the same as Ariana Grande's BPM when her mother had her first ultrasound. She was literally meant to do this. People love a good narrative. Taylor Swift's music started getting popular because she uses good narrative in her songwriting and people can relate to that. A good narrative just hits different. But when influencers start making music, there is a huge concern because they might be doing it for the money. And how dare you use something as sacred as music to make money. It's like music is a business. Are you telling me that music is a business? How dare you act like music is a business? How dare you have a degree that's literally called music business? So with this in mind, should we really ban TikTokers from making music eternally, universally, but more importantly, legally? The answer is of course, yes. Have you seen this? Human lives are at stake and I did what I had to do. Court is adjourned.